Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. Welcome to the first webinar of the Educational Technology or EdTech for All video series presented by the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Educational Technology and Office of Special Education Programs. We are very excited to share with you about the digital writing tool we go right, so let's get started. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, you can see that there is auto closed captioning is available. Um, it should be at the bottom of your screen under CC. And you can also share questions throughout the webinar using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We will be answering questions from the audience at the end of the webinar. So to help get us started, imagine this theoretical story that um, teachers Anita and Ellery work in the same school and we each had a diverse group of fifth grade students in our classrooms. Anita printed graphic organizers on paper for her students to support their writing. Ellery used an online technology-based graphic organizer and data-based feedback. Anita reviewed the paper-based graphic organizers and provided feedback on the final product. Ellery was able to adjust her teaching based on the data received, data results she received. The students in Anita's class made improvements in writing at a slower pace. The students in Ellery's class made improvements in writing at a faster pace. And that's why we're here today. We all want to see student improvements and support teacher efficiency. So with that in mind, we are here today to equip educators and school leaders with evidence-based ed tech tools to implement with those students who have or do not have disabilities with the goal of improving student outcomes. And so educational technology, as known as ed tech, is any technology used for purpose of learning. And accessibility is the design of apps, devices, materials, and environments that support and enable access to content and educational activities for all learners. Educational materials and technologies are accessible to people with disabilities if they are able to acquire the same information, engage in the same interactions, and enjoy the same services as people who do not have disabilities. Anita and I are excited to present on, present on the behalf of the Department of Education. I am Ellery from the Office of Educational Technology, or OET. I'm a young white female with brown, dark brown curly hair. Previously, I was a middle school and high school special education teacher and a parent advocate supporting families with children with disabilities. Currently, I support OET projects on accessibility, and OET's mission is to develop national ed tech policy and establish the vision for how technology can be used to transform teaching and learning and how to make everywhere all the time learning possible for early learners through K-12, higher education, and adult education. And I'll pass it to my colleague. So I'm Anita, and I'm from the Office of Special Education Programs. I am a white female with long blonde hair. I've spent most of my career working as a teacher, a coach, technology specialist, and district administrator. Currently, I support a lot of projects in OSEP, and, which is the Office of Special Education Programs. And we are dedicated to improving results for infants, toddlers, children, and youth with disabilities ages birth through 21. OSEP directly and through its partners and grantees develops a wide range of research-based products, publications, and resources to assist states, local district personnel, and families to improve results for students with disabilities. I was muted, of course. Now we will introduce the people we are all here to learn from today. Panelists, um, if you'll turn on your cameras, please share your name, a visual description of yourself, and your role as it relates to We Go Right. And I will call on people one by one to make it a bit easier. So we will start with Anya. Sure. Hello, everyone. And first of all, thank you so much for choosing to spend your Thursday afternoon with us. We are super excited to see all of you here. My name is Dr. Anya Minova, and I'm a professor of special education at George Mason University. I am a white female with short blonde hair and an accent uh, because I'm originally from uh, Russia. 
Um, and for this project, uh, with my partner, uh, Dr. Kelly Regan, um, we've been leading the development of the tool that we are excited to share with you today. Great. Thank you, Anya. And I'll pass it on to Kelly. Hi, everybody. I am uh, Dr. Kelly Regan. I am a white female with brown hair. I'm wearing glasses. Um, and I'm a professor of special education at George Mason University. I work uh, with Dr. Evmanova, and I am a principal investigator of We Go Right. We look forward to sharing this tool with you today. Thank you, Kelly. And I will pass it on to Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie Jalmervik. I am a white female with medium blonde hair. I wear glasses and I am currently a reading teacher for special needs students. And I'm also a parent. Thank you, Stephanie. I'll pass it to Holly, if Holly could join. Hi, I'm Holly Kaimig. Uh, I am a white woman with red hair. I am a middle school English teacher in an inclusive classroom of students of varying beautiful talents and abilities. Thanks, Holly. I'll pass it on to Sarah. Hi, everybody. I am Sarah Smorelli, and I am a white blonde female. I um, had the pleasure of working with um, We Go Right with ELLs in a um, self-inclusion self class and then also co-teaching with Dr. Nutt. Great. And lastly, I will pass it on to Kathy. I'm Dr. Kathy Nutt, and I am a white female with gray hair because I'm a little bit older than the mm -hmm. rest of you. And um, I am currently the reading specialist and an English teacher in the middle school. Um, so last year, I had the pleasure to work with um, actually Sarah in um, an inclusion class. Um, we had both students with disabilities and second language learners um, with great success. Um, this year, I uh, have a general education English class uh, with the um, EL teacher pushing in to provide supports for um, our second language learners. Thank you so much, Kathy. We are so, so excited to have all of you here and hear from all of your different experiences and perspectives. Now, we will ask the audience to introduce yourselves. A poll should pop up on your screen, so please select what your primary role is. Um, there is general educator, special educator, related service provider, literacy and reading teacher or coach, technology specialist, and administrator researcher, and parent or caregiver, or other. It's really great to be able to get to know who is in our virtual room. And we'll give it another 20, 30 seconds to let people respond. Okay, great. Thank you so much for responding. It looks like we have a mix of everyone in the in the group. We have general educators, um, even more special educators, literacy and reading teachers and coaches, technology specialists, administrators, researchers, parents and caregivers, and um, people of various other roles. So thank you all so much for joining us. We, we're so excited to be here with you. We're very excited to have you all with us today and also to hear from this panel. So Kelly, um, my first question is for you. As the developer, can you uh, tell us about your tool and why you decided to make this tool? 
Yeah, sure. Thank you. So um, I didn't do anything by myself. First of all, it was definitely a team of people and, and we refer to ourselves as the we go right team. Uh, we made a technology tool for both students and their teachers and we go right stands for writing efficiently with graphic organizers responsive instruction while implementing technology effectively. And our tool has two major aims. The first one was to really improve the quantity and quality of persuasive essay writing performance by students with and without disabilities who may struggle with writing. And then our second aim of the project was to support teachers to integrate technology effectively and to then use data to make instructional decisions in the area of writing instruction. And so in our iterative development of this tool, we really relied on the existing research-based evidence that strategy instruction, the use of mnemonic, word processing, self-regulated learning strategies, graphic organizers, universal design for learning supports, video models, and what we know about data-driven decision-making that can provide students with disabilities during um, essay writing. Thank you, Kelly. That sounds really intriguing. Um, there's a lot going on in the field of tech ed today, or ed tech today. So Anya, can you tell us about how you use the tool with students, such as uh, when do you use it, uh, what digital features you have that are best about this tool? Absolutely. I will be happy to do that. Um, I have the best part because I will get to show you guys the tool. Uh, but what is it? So the tool that we've developed, tested, changed, refined, tested again, changed again for more than 10 years is what we call a technology-based graphic organizer or TBGO. It's a web-based program. It's available in uh, Google Chrome. So it would work on any device in a Chrome browser. Um, and our extensive research shows that um, it really helps all the students with their essay writing. For students uh, with disabilities, it improves both their quantity and quality of their writing. For students without disabilities, it still helps them a lot with the quality of their essay writing. And the best part is that when we take away the graphic organizer at the end, all the students maintain those gains. So this um, particular TBGO that we will be showing today is actually designed for specifically for a persuasive essay genre, but we do um, also have other genres in the works. Um, and the tool is absolutely free. It's available free on the website, which I believe was already shared in the chat um, window with you. So let me show you the tool a little bit. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay. Um, we start with uh, uh, selecting a prompt section. So the way we've done it is that the teacher assigns two prompts to choose from. Um, however, teachers or parents could also choose to just assign one prompt. Uh, but either way, the TBGO guides students um, through this strategic approach um, about the prompt that they will write about. Um, the, what we call it is, uh, in this case, students have a voice and choice. <laughs> um, then once the students have decided which prompt they want to write about, it's time to pick a goal. So there are two uh, goals that students usually select. Uh, one of them is an essay goal. And the essay goal focuses on the um, essay elements. So the goal might be to include three reasons and one explanation, two, three reasons and two explanations, or three reasons and three explanations. Uh, but then there is also a personal writing goal, which includes um, about half a dozen of options in the drop down menu, uh, such as I will work on my capitalization, I will include vivid words, and so on. 
So this step may require some guidance from, from teachers or parents, uh, but um, it's very important. It's one of the self-regulated learning strategies to select a goal. Next slide, please. And then after that, so after selecting the prompt and the goals, students move to the second part. And this is where the magic happens. Uh, first of all, students brainstorm their ideas. Uh, we ask students to do it outside of the TBGO, but they should use one of the six strategies um, that we list there. You probably, it's, it's probably hard to see, but the strategies are visualize images, search images, draw a picture, make a web, make a list, talk about it. And then after brainstorming is done, students organize some of those thoughts um, into this keywords column. Now, when they do that, they try to align those thoughts with the mnemonic ideas. So if you look on the, the very first column on the left side, it has that mnemonic ideas. It's just a great memory tool uh, for students that uh, reminds them what are some essential elements of a persuasive essay. Um, so then after they organize their thoughts, they start writing their sentences. That's the, the orange section in the, in the graphic organizer. Um, in this particular example on your screen, you can see only one sentence written in each cell. Um, that means that there will be a one paragraph essay at the end, and this is for students who are just learning to um, do a persuasive writing. Um, this, each cell could include a whole paragraph, and at the end you would end up with up to eight paragraph essay. So the tool is very um, flexible in how it can be used. Um, the one of the greatest uh, features in that section is that at the beginning of each sentence, students choose a transition word. So uh, that has been described by students as a genius feature. Uh, and uh, that is something that we see in our research, that even when we take away the graphic organizer to see if students can still do it without it, um, the use of, of transition words um, stays uh, because they just get used to using those transition words. And then the last column it, on your screen, that's uh, check your work. That's another self-regulated learning strategy, which is self-monitoring. So students check off all the parts that they have done. Next slide, please. So you might ask, what if I have a student who does not know how to brainstorm or you just listed six strategies? My students may not know that or need help with that. Well, uh, you will find several uh, yellow light bulbs throughout the graphic organizer, which are linked to these content video models. Um, so if you notice that a student needs some help in a certain area, let's say in the area of brainstorming, you can tell them or guide them to watch this content video associated with that um, task. And that will give them that supplementary instruction about that area of writing. Now, the content videos have been created through multiple cycles of research uh, with teachers as well as with students who chose the characters in the content videos. Um, and we also have how-to videos uh, built in throughout, which basically show how to use the graphic organizer. Next slide, please. And then whilst you complete everything in the graphic organizer, with a one click of one button, you get to the next step when all the sentences are uh, sort of transformed into your final paragraph form. As I mentioned before, this is an example of just one paragraph. But remember, if, if students write more in each cell, it could be a multiple paragraph uh, product. Um, here, students are encouraged to um, 
uh, read their essay uh, using text to speech or to listen to it and to revise and edit it. So clicking anywhere on that screen, uh, students have an option to, to have that text to speech. And then the last and final step is to evaluate. Um, and that's where the students just answer these guiding questions about their final product and choose either got it or almost their face. Um, and that's another self-regulated learning strategies that uh, has shown to be uh, very effective. Um, next slide, please. So that was a, a student side of things, right? The, the, the features that students might use to improve their writing. In addition to all those features, we also have a teacher dashboard. And in the teacher dashboard, the teacher can review students' work, they can score their writing. Um, this is what you see on the screen are uh, just some data collected in the teacher dashboard, such as the final essay, how many times they viewed videos and for how long, did they use text-to-speech and for how long, um, if they used any other features like transition words, um, it lists the total number of words, total time spent, as well as the number of attempts it took them to finish this particular product. And then in addition to that, to those data, teachers are also provided with uh, this sort of um, resources to engage in data-driven decision-making or DDDM. And this is done by scoring students' work with this built-in analytic rubric and making an instructional decision um, at the end. As you can see on the screen, on the left, teachers see the completed graphic organizer, and then the rubric is on the right. Thank you so much, Kelly and Anya, for that great description about the tool and the different features teachers can have access to. Now that we have a better understanding of how the tool works, let's hear from Stephanie, a parent whose children uses the tool. Stephanie, can you tell us about your child's write experience in writing in general, and what was your child's writing like before and after this tool was introduced? Absolutely. Um, talking about, I actually have two children that were able to use this program, one in fourth grade and one in seventh grade. It was a wonderful opportunity, and it was definitely changing for them. Prior to uh, writing, my oldest, had difficulty with organization. Um, a lot of it was putting words down, but then they would not necessarily be make sense in the end. Kind of frustrating for the teachers and also for myself uh, reading through them and trying to help them. My younger child who was in fourth grade um, has dyslexia and is working through a lot of the writing challenges that come with dyslexia. And this tool was made it accessible for her prior to writing it was a foreboding task to sit down and have to write out her ideas and to struggle to put them into words and into organizational pattern and structure uh, after they were introduced to it in both one was in fourth the other in seventh like i said they were given very clear and very systematic steps to start the program as guided by um, the WeGo team, the GMU team, which we have love. And they came out and talked to them about how to address each step of the, the program or of the template, the graphic organizer. And each step was easy, clear, and it provided a structure for my children that I hadn't seen before. And um, they no longer think of it as a foreboding task. In fact, um, they love during the time to see the numbers going up of how many words they had written. And it was an exciting opportunity for them to say, whoa, look how much I've written and not have it be a struggle. Um, my oldest, I, they found that their writing was much more organized and it flowed. Um, where it hadn't before because it forced them to go through the steps. Um, I will say almost three years later, 
Both my children still use the program um, independently from school. They come out, um, they'll ask me, mom, what was that program again? And so they'll pull it up under their, under their computer. Um, my oldest used it for a high school application program just to make sure that they hit all of their bullet points and made sure it was an or organized and, and systematic. Uh, my child used it, my youngest used it for um, a history a history essay um, a few months ago, and then most recently for her science fair uh, right, essay. They, it, they love it. The output goes straight into a Google Doc. It, it's easy and clear. I couldn't be happier with what they've been able to do since being introduced to the program. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing about that, Stephanie. It's so wonderful to hear that your children are using it even beyond the years that they originally were introduced to it. And it just shows how valuable they see it. Um, I know that it can be difficult as a previous teacher. It can be difficult to be in a large classroom and be able to support students with various needs. Um, so Holly, as a general education teacher, can you tell us about how you implemented the technology-based graphic organizer or TVGO in a large inclusive classroom and adjusted your instruction based on student data? And more specifically, how did you use the data-driven decision-making or DDDM to guide your writing instruction? Yes, so what's really fantastic about this tool is that it kind of demystifies the writing process in the sense that I can tell using the rubric the exact step where each student faced a challenge. And by being able to address the exact step in the process where they hit their roadblock, I can develop specific instruction that addresses their needs. So obviously one of the greatest ways to implement you know, data-driven decision-making is with individual interventions. And what's really great about the tool is that there's actually videos, intervention videos embedded into the tool that review various parts of the step of the writing process. So I often will have students come and watch the videos and we'll watch them together and they'll respond to them. And, and you have the time to do that. The individual intervention is great, but obviously in a large classroom, sometimes you don't have the time to meet with every student individually, depending on how much support you have. So I've also found you can do it in small groups. You'll find that there are multiple students who, for example, struggle with um, transition words. So then you can create an activity for that small group, or you can use the in tools already implemented in the, in the um, tool and have that small group work together to develop that skill. So if a small group is struggling with brainstorming, then I can, you know, make, you know, groups of students and sort of have them work on their brainstorming while another group is working on the editing and revising steps. And what's really great about these groups is that they move and change because depending on the prompt, some students have no problems brainstorming for a prompt and some students with a different prompt struggle with brainstorming. So the groups you know, move and allow different students to interact with each other. And again, because the rubrics are consistent and specific for each prompt, it is really, really easy for the teacher to be able to identify which students are struggling with which step and then be able to adjust for them. So that is how I've used the tool in my general education classroom. And it's just really increased student confidence. And it's also te taught students to be sort of metacognitive about their own writing because they're partners in this. So when they get that specific feedback from me, it allows them to sort of give themselves their own feedback and think really about the writing process and all of the steps and how they can improve their writing. Thanks, Holly. And just one follow-up question based on what you just shared. Um, how has this tool improved your teaching and your teaching efficiency with a large group of students um, in a way that, you know, paper organizers may have not been able to do? Well, I think because it is online, it's, you know, there's so much convenience to that. The consistent rubric allows me to be consistent when evaluating student work. Um, and I think that because it is online, there are so many other options that make the tool easier for students. The read aloud option, for example, a lot of students don't hear something that something doesn't sound as great as it could until they hear it spoken back to them. So just having things being able to be re read aloud to them. I, honestly, I think that's one of my students' favorite feature about the tools when they're done writing, it can read what they've written to them. And when they hear it, like, well, a lot of times I wrote that, the students like, I wrote that and like the confidence there, but like, 
you know, as a teacher in a large classroom, having a tool that has all of those nece necessities built in saves me time because the videos are already there. So I don't have to go find videos to explain these, you know, steps to them. The read aloud tool is already there. It, you know, automatically puts it into a paragraph for them so that that's a step they don't have to do. Like it's say when you're teaching in a larger classroom, anything you can do to sort of save those little logistical pieces, the time gives you more time to actually talk to the students about writing. So it just makes the process so much more smooth because I'm not caught up with smaller steps of like, you know, finding videos or reading things a lot to students or, you know, okay, now copy and paste this into a different document. Like all of that is, you know, implemented, integrated into the tool. So it just saves me time so that I can spend more time talking to the students about their areas of growth and their writing. Thanks so much, Holly. I know teachers already have so much on their plate. So to be able to have those extra resources and support makes a huge difference. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and so now that we've heard about the tool in a kind of larger classroom, we also know that there's a great need for the use of ed tech with English language learners. So Sarah, as an ELL teacher, how does this tool support your students and how did the tool impact your students over time? Um, well, I know it was not necessarily designed with ESLs or ELLs in mind, but it is ideal for them. Um, like many of the other um, speakers have said, the structure and just teaching them that process step-by-step step in a guided way makes a huge difference. Um, it's got the scaffolding built in. Like Anya said, I like what one student said, um, that the transition words are genius because my students love those. Um, for some of my newcomers, I would initially print out the um, transition words and translate them so they understood what they were in Spanish or their first language. And then it was the best tool. And I'm sorry, I think I just pronounced your name wrong also. Um, but yeah, so that's great. The scaffolding is built in. It lets them work independently once they've gone through it. We, we did the um, I do, we do, you do concept. And once we've done that, they can then do it on their own. And so they're working independently and I'm not having to hover and always provide. In the past, I'd have to do a lot of sentence frames or sentence stems like visually. And so other kids see them getting those, but this way I don't have to do that because they have the transition words and the sentences are started for them right there. So it really lowers that affective fil filter and they get more independence. And um, for me, I mean, the biggest thing is the growth over time, especially with one of my newcomers was unbelievable. You know, at the beginning, he was not even writing a complete sentence. And once we worked through the TBGO several times, he was writing a very short paragraph. And again, thinking about the different levels, I had newcomers, I had level three students. So they're all working in their own pace. Some of them are writing much longer, you know, filling up more of those cells and they could all do it on their own level with the supports built into the program. So it was ideal. Thank you so much for sharing, Sarah. It's amazing to see and be able to see right on the screen just the improvement of just using this tool. It's fantastic. Thank you. It was great. Um, we also know that using a new tool can be incredibly overwhelming for teachers. And so Kathy, as a reading specialist, what advice do you have for other educators and, and why should they consider using this tool with students, especially those with disabilities? Well, um, of course I, this, I use the WeGo with um, my English students. Um, and because it was an inclusion class, I have students with disabilities. But with Sarah, and then even this year, um, EL students. Um, and of course, my understanding of working with EL students, they learn, you know, the strategies you use with um, students with disabilities are very effective for EL students. And um, just having learned about WeGo from Anya that, you know, it, they work for really all ability levels. What I found really um, important with the WeGo um, was because, you know, the students, I could provide them direct explicit instruction, um, which as a special educator and as a reading specialist, um, I found that's really critical. Um, you know, that students really need to have a clear understanding 
of the task at hand. Um, so of course there's scaffolding. Um, Sarah, I had um, you know mentioned the I do, we do, you do, uh, which I do. Um, and I don't just do that using the WeGo. I do it with my reading students. Um, so in introducing it, of course, um, as I think Holly had mentioned, the, the videos are excellent. And um, so, you know, I did that as a whole class activity, but encourage students to go back if they needed some extra information or a reminder. But so we would start out and I would model a prompt. So we do it, you know, I would do it. I would choose a, a, a topic and, and go through the whole process so that the students would see exactly what um, the, you know, graphic organizer provided. Um, and then we would choose a prompt to work on together. Um, one of them was we um, did that, um, should students take a shower every day? And, and my kids just love that, you know, eighth graders. Um, and why, you know, they had to be persuasive about it. So that was just really a fun um, activity that we were all doing it as a group and everybody was able to contribute. Then once they they were familiar, um, felt comfortable with the um, the graphic organizer, um, they then were assigned um, quite a number of writing prompts over the course of time. And, um, and then I was also getting them to take what they did in the prompt and then actually write a, a Google Doc, you know, based on that topic. So that made them really comfortable um, and successful. Um, I think one of the things I love about the We Go Right though is it's very intuitive. Um, it's, it's easy to do, it's easy to learn. Um, and I, I do want to interject, it was funny because um, as we were closing in on the writing SOL um, like a month ago, I had assigned, uh, it was actually something different um, based on a reading we had done in English. And um, the students had to write, you know, a short essay in response. And um, I had probably about four of my students and they're my stronger students say, can we use the We Go Write? before we do the final prompt. And I was like, yeah, sure, of course. And I had to go in and, you know, I set it up for them. Um, and so, you know, when my students started asking me if they can use it ahead of, you know, just a, a normal writing assignment tells me that they see value in it. And um, sometimes it's really hard to get middle schoolers to really see value in, in any kind of a, a tool. So um, I have really enjoyed using it and I have seen growth for all of them. Um, so we don't know how they did on the SOL yet. Um, we'll get those scores back end of April. But at the end of the day, I, I felt like, you know, they, they show growth, they have growth. Um, especially, you know, some of the real struggling students that don't want to write at all. And then of course, having that read aloud option is good because I have, um, you know, some below grade level readers. So it kind of checks off all the boxes. That's great. Thank you so much, Kathy. And a follow-up question is, uh, for new teachers with so much on their plate, you, what can you share with them as they may feel stressed to start out with a, with a new tool that they haven't used before? Right. Um, well, it's interesting because last year we had a, um, a teacher here at Marshall that um, was a relatively um, novice teacher and she took off with it. And because there's not that extra prep, you don't, as, as I think Holly mentioned, you don't have to go look for videos to, you know, um, provide some of the instruction. It's, it's already done for you. And it takes very little time to learn it. Um, I figure um, I am not a technology wizard. And if I can learn it, anybody can but um yeah no i think it's it's almost like a no brainer for young teachers new teachers because once they learn it it takes so much off their plate as far as instructional preparation great thank you so much for sharing about those experiences yeah it really sounds very um useful and impactful so i really appreciate you sharing all not just um what you shared kathy but all of the other um panelists today um and so i was thinking 
I can only imagine that parents and educators are really wanting to get started, right? So Kelly, would you tell us a little bit more about what are some supports available for educators who want to learn more about the tool and get started uh, to implement this right away? And like where and how should they start? Yeah, sure, absolutely. An excellent starting point is going to be our WeGo website. So it's on the screen. So please jot that down or just go ahead and bookmark the site. Um, if you would like to just explore the tool, um, you can do that at the website. Uh, just select TBGOs. The site takes you to the links where you can access a free non-login version of the TBGO, again, in a Google Chrome browser. And then there's also links to request a free login version of the TBGO, and that will give you access to that teacher dashboard that Anya spoke of earlier. The website also has lots of resources, supplementary materials, like video guides to accompany those videos that were mentioned. And then um, another example is the six professional development modules uh, that we've created are accessible on our site. Um, and this offers teachers just step-by-step -step directions on how to implement the tool with Fidelity. And these are all online. They're self-paced and you can complete them at your convenience. Um, and they can also possibly result in um, recertification points towards um, licensure renewal. Um, so if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, Anya's email's on the slide there. Um, and so if you, if you want to use the tool, have questions, or even engage in some research with us, don't hesitate uh, to reach out. That's great. Thanks, um, Kelly. Really amazing to know that this is fully free and oh, so many tools and resources are at their, their fingertips to get started. Uh, before all of your inboxes get full, uh, let's start to think about how we can maybe answer some questions, uh, you know, from the audience. So if you're in the audience and you haven't had a chance yet, there's a Q&A box at the bottom to please enter um, your questions. I think some of them were answered along the way. Uh, um, Anya, would you like to just kind of summarize in a, a you know a couple of minutes of one I will be absolutely some of the questions you answered that. along the way. Uh, thank you guys so much. The questions are fantastic. Um, so sort of couple couple um, themes that <laughs> emerged from the questions um, are well first of all is, is this tool available in 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 um, a different language than English and unfortunately it's not however I believe that as Sarah shared with us um, even students who are newcomers and don't have a lot of English they are still able to navigate the tool um, if you look at the screenshot or at the tool you know, you see a lot of text. However, uh, there are also other supports like those videos. Uh, there are audio comments. There are um, um, different um, images. So even if you don't have the in English uh, language yet, you are able to use it um, in our experience. And and that also answers the question if if you can use this with um, uh um, immigrant kids who are learning English. I, I believe you totally can. Um, another point about that, which also touches on another question, um, because it's a Chrome base, it works in, in Chrome and in Google browser. So it's a web-based application. Because of that, you really can use it with any other Chrome extension. So for example, uh, we don't have speech to text built in. But you totally can use the Chrome uh, um, extension for, for speech to text and, and have students um, speak into the graphic organizer because it is the Chrome based program. They do work well together in the same way you can use it with the uh, translator extension. So that, that way it also can be more accessible to uh, more students. Um, it is absolutely free. You do need to request that login version that we've mentioned, uh, but it's still free. Uh, the reason why you need to request it is that so that we can keep track of, of things. So you submit a request and you get it uh, 
uh, for absolutely free. So nothing, it's, it's free for everyone, parents, teachers, uh, you don't have to be a teacher to use it. We've actually had quite a few parents use it with their children um, outside of the school setting. Um, uh, to answer Mike's question about can this program be put on a communication device, we have not explored that, but we are always up for a challenge. So let's talk <laughs> and I'm sure we can figure something out. Um, the rubric in the TBGO cannot be uh, modified. So it is the it is the rubric that whatever is built in is there. However, I think as Holly mentioned, um, it's quite comprehensive. So you can you certainly can find what what you need to focus on as a teacher, in my opinion, in that rubric, because there are a lot of options. So it's not it's 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 quite extensive rubric. Each next row appears after you complete it, not to overwhelm you at the very beginning with you know, many, many options there. And then the, the other question was about how students select the prompt. And that is, they just, there, there are, there are um, uh, buttons that they click as they answer the guiding questions. And that's how they select the prompt. However, that doesn't, the TBGO doesn't do anything based on that selection. It's still the student's job to then write an essay about that prompt. And in case you have students struggling with that, then we have a content video model <laughs> that students can explore uh, that way. Um, we have not used the tools di directly with uh, deaf and hard of hearing writers. However, uh, we do believe it is accessible. We do have um, all the uh, of the um, content videos and the how-to videos are captioned. Um, so we have not worked with that population directly, but um, you know, uh, 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 we we can explore that. and I do believe that it, it would be fine. Um, it, the students do not need to provide the email. So the teacher or the parent requests the account. Um, and they do need to provide an email address for that, but then uh, the 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 adult uh, creates the student's accounts under under their uh, login version uh, under their teacher dashboard. Um, so you know, you, no no emails are needed. The uh, usernames and the passwords are absolutely uh, student ones can definitely be um, created based on your preference. Uh, so the adult is the one who is um, managing all of that. Thank you so much. Um, okay. I think you've answered all the questions unless somebody else has one to add in the chat. I do have another question uh, maybe for any of the educators uh, or parent on, on the call. Um, you know, what has been some of the previous experience finding and using uh, and implementing accessible technology and accessible ed tech with students, especially students with disabilities? What has there been experience? I'm curious as to, you know, before we go right and after we go right. Anybody like to answer that? I'm happy to. Oh, sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> you can go first. <laughs> I was just going to say um, that as both a parent and a reading teacher, I can say there aren't any, very many out there, um, especially if you're looking for something as condensed as, as the Wego Write is. You know, there are some fill in the blanks and different um, uh, Venn diagrams and, and like the Miro and things like this, but nothing that is concise and allows you to have a polished finished product. So I, I hope that helps answer your question. Thank you. Anybody else like to add? Yeah, before this, I used to make these outlines myself, which again, the time that it would take to like make one and make it in Google Docs and like, you know, because I was making, I would literally make a table in Google Docs and made the boxes myself, like your first body paragraph and I had a box for your reason. Like I literally like made, I was doing all of this work and then this tool exists and I don't, and it is so applicable to so many different prompts that I don't have to recreate an outline for every prompt. I've used this for like, do you think school should start later? 
calculator as a prompt. And then I've used this for students doing literary analysis of Romeo and Juliet. Like I've used it like, do you think Prince Aeschylus banishing Romeo was too harsh of a punishment? Use examples from the play to explain your answer. And like, it's worked for that. Like it, and the rubric has worked for both of those kinds of prompts too. So like, because it's like so easy to use for different prompts, it's just saved me so much time because I used to have to like create an outline for every prompt that we ever did. And it, you know, when you're teaching students, like you want to have more time to actually be, you know, with the students. So it, it's been great for that. Thank you. Anyone else want to add? Um, so I wanted to, can I follow up on that? Uh, not to follow up. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. <laughs> but yeah. I did want to mention something uh, that uh, Holly said about the prompts. Um, so I thought it was important to mention that um, we do have a library of prompts built into the teacher dashboard that teachers or parents, especially parents, can select from. And those are the uh, prompts that we've accumulated from multiple uh, practice standardized testing um, uh, um, resources. Um, we've validated all those prompts. So you have a, a very long laundry list of, of different persuasive prompts in the system that you can choose from. But it also, as Holly said, you can totally create your own prompts and make them um, uh, fit whatever it is that you're teaching or might be focusing at the time. Um, so there is that flexibility as well. Thank you. That's great. Is there any more questions from the audience? Waiting, we're giving a moment or two of waiting time. <laughs> we could summarize the Valerie do you have any other questions or shall we go on to summarizing I think we can head to closing out and, and sharing where you can find all these great resources great so thank you so much for joining us um, we really hope you learned a lot about a great tool that you can incorporate into your classroom um, you'll be able to find a recording of this webinar as well as a we a we go right resource on OET's website, tech.ed.gov slash accessibility, which is a fresh new uh, web page. So check it out. <laughs> also, OSEP's website at OSEPideasthatwork.org. And lastly, we go rights website at wego.gmu.edu. Um, I also want to share a little bit about the Office of Educational Technologies, OET's resources. Um, you can sign up for the OET's newsletter at the link shared in the chat, which we share about quarterly um, about what we're working on, as well as the OET blog that shares a lot of resources, information on a variety of technology um, topics. I also really would like to share about the Affordable Connectivity Program, or ACP. ACP provides a discount of up to $30 per month toward internet service for eligible households and up to $75 per month for households on qualifying tribal lands. So if anyone knows families or children who use uh, access for your reduced lunches, they will qualify. So please, please share this out with families using this link because there's a lot of money that's not being used. Lastly, there's the Office for Civil Rights Digital Accessibility video series, and that shows really great short clips on different digital accessibility topics, and it's a great way to learn how to make your materials accessible and incorporate that into the classroom. And I'll pass it to Anita. Thank you. And to learn more about the Office of Special Education Programs and our work, you can visit osepideasthatwork.org. Or you can also sign up for the blog and newsletter at sites.ed.gov slash IDEA. I'll drop, I dropped the links in the chat. I can put them in there again, because sometimes that happens. Um, 
but also please make sure to watch uh, for those of you that are a recording. Um, I mean, watching a recording of this, we're going to put all of the links in the description of the recording. And uh, per our ed, ed tech, watch out for May because we're very excited to continue this journey of having some more free or almost free tech tools that are making a difference for our students. Thank you everyone for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, panelists. Thank you. It was great. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.